Okay. Here we go. Welcome to Time Leadership Roundtable. I'm very happy that you're here today. And I just want to thank you first for being here. I know some of you have gotten up early or you might be squeezing this into your day. And I appreciate you taking time out of your busy lives, which we're going to be highlighting today to be here with us. So before we dive in, just checking to make sure that you mute your microphone so we can get a really clean recording of this for the people who are going to be listening to the recording and watching back later. So as we dive in, I just want to share with you what we're going to be covering today for, you know, the next 30, 45 minutes or so. We're going to be exploring time leadership and understanding why conventional time management has failed leaders and business owners. And, you know, it's, it's I think, easy to say this is very simplistic, but, you know, the, the word management implies a sense of control. And I think most leaders understand and most humans understand that we really don't have a lot of control over time. So we're going to be spending a good amount of our, our time together learning of kind of the difference between management and leadership in terms of time. But before we start, I'd like to just read a quote to you, which is, time is the coin of your life. It's the only coin you have, and only you can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest you let other people spend it for you. And that is from Carl Sandburg. And I really appreciate this quote because it's, you know, it's the one thing that's finite for us. It's the one thing that no matter what we do, we can't create more. We can't stop it from happening. There's nothing we can do about the passing of time. So we have to look at it in a different way. So let's talk a little bit about what probably brought you here today. If you're anything like my clients, you're probably here today because you're experiencing something like this. And you can see from these pictures here and the captions that there's, you know, something to this. So my clients come to me with various frustrations and desires, but 100% of my clients share one singular complaint. They never have enough time. One of my client's top priorities was really to clear up time to eat lunch, to leave on time every day, and to open up two half days, one for research to stay on top of his game, and the other to be with his young children in the afternoon while his wife was recovering during her maternity leave. No small, uh, no small task there to try to free up his time. But he did share with me that he was waking up at about three o'clock in the morning, many nights a week in a cold sweat, dreaming that his practice was a monster swallowing him whole. He was thinking about selling his practice and possibly going back into a hospital environment, which was not really the best place for him because his bigger vision, his ultimate goal and dream was to expand his practice and open a multidisciplinary integrative wellness center. You can't do that if you're working for somebody else, but he was exhausted in part because they had a new baby and three children under the age of four but also because of how his work was going. He hardly ever had time to eat lunch during his workday, and he never had time to do his research and writing, or so he thought. His wife was worried about his well-being, and she was also a little frustrated because he was often late coming home from work and picking up their two older children from their daycare. He was struggling to be present in all aspects of his life and work. And he, I'm telling you, we'd get on calls and I'd take a look at him and go, mm. Did you eat today? <laughs> How much sleep did you get? How are we going to remedy this? But in addition to all of that, even though he had a waiting list, his revenues had stalled. He couldn't see how he could possibly grow his practice without working even more, which definitely was not an option for him. Here's the kicker, though. He was actually also performing some admin tasks to to kind of pick up the slack, which I will just tell you right now is never recommended for the provider. And it's never recommended for the business owner once you get to a certain point in your business. So in a few words, he was a hot mess and his practice was still growing, like right from underneath him. The systems that he had in place when he was flying mostly solo were no longer sustainable. And he was afraid that his practice was actually going to crumble underneath him. At this point of growth in his practice, it was too painful to scale his practice. And he couldn't fathom how he could serve more patients, even though he had the waiting list that I'd mentioned. He had a long list of people waiting to come and see him. All these patients who he could have been serving. 
And if you can relate to any of this, go ahead and pop it in the chat. <laughs> like, yes, I can relate. I'll stop sharing screen at some point and take a look at the chat and make sure I don't miss anything. But I'm going to work on the assumption that that's what brought you here today. So I'd like to share that there usually comes a time when your business will demand that you up-level your leadership. I see this trend initially kind of around the 250 to 500,000 uh, revenue mark, and then again, crossing into the seven-figure revenue range. Your business doesn't just need you to up-level, it will actually demand it. And if you don't take care of your problems and address your challenges and the issues that crop up on a regular basis, I'm sorry to say this, if you don't do it before you scale, you will simply grow your problems with you. And I don't know how you feel about that, but I definitely don't want that. So let's talk about a solution. Let's, let's not hang out in the pain point too much, right? So, you know, we're going to go a little deeper into this client's experience. His name is Jeremy, by the way, and he's a chiropractor in Norway. So let's, let's talk about his experience and I'm just using round numbers to keep it simple, but let's say that his hourly rate is 300 an hour, just for a nice round number. He was performing administrative tasks, sometimes up to three hours a day, depending on the day. So let's think about that. If he were charging for that, he'd be charging $300 an hour. Now let's say the average medical admin professional makes $20 an hour. Again, just round numbers. So that's $280 an hour going left on the table. Now you probably already know this, but let's just remind you revenues are king, right? We need those revenues to make things happen in our businesses. So at three hours a day, he was leaving approximately $840 on the table each day. And that works out to about 43,000 and change per year left on the table just in admin tasks that he was covering. When he actually could have hired an admin for around that salary and increased his patient load without working more hours. So even if you're not money driven, you can see how expensive it is. It's expensive in terms of time and energy and money. And if we're not monetizing our businesses, we have an expensive hobby. So we need to be at least somewhat, you know, money focused. So Fortunately, he was open to making some changes, including hiring a new administrative professional and adjusting his schedule just a little bit. He started looking around at, at holes in his schedule that he, where he could layer patients. As a chiropractor, he could have people doing different things at different times and still be able to spend a good amount of quality time with each patient without falling behind schedule and without you know stretching himself beyond the work hours he wanted to spend. But before we even started the real work, I'm saying this in quotes here, like the, the real stuff that we really dive into in the coaching, he was able to shift a few things around. He optimized his patient time. And within about three or four months, he increased his revenues by 40%. I used to joke and say results not typical, but I'm starting to see this trend with my clients now. They free up their time. They make small adjustments. Boom. The business grows, the money starts coming in a little bit better. 40% is quite a lot better in a short period of time. He also, this is important, started eating lunch every day. He was, he was able to take restroom breaks. <laughs> he uh, left on time most days, not a hundred percent, but in three or four months time, that's a pretty, you know, pretty good improvement. And by the end of six months, he was researching and getting ready to publish an article, the thing that he really wanted to do. He wanted to be able to establish himself as an expert in his area of expertise. So here's me. This is where I entered the picture. My name's Tracy. I'm an executive coach and a business consultant. I'm mom to two amazing older teenagers, one who's 18 and getting ready to head off to Berkeley College of Music in the fall. And I have a rising junior in high school who's 16. I'm happily married. My husband's name is Aaron. And we relocated to Chapel Hill, North Carolina from the DC area in 2017. I will just share with you that the quality of our life has improved as we've slowed down and lived in a, in a slower paced area which is, makes us all very happy. For the last 12 years, I have been working with private practice owners and their teams to help them connect deeply with their visions and grow their businesses to support their dreams, many of which go way beyond medical and healthcare and wellness. I worked in the corporate world in operations and also in the consulting world. 
when I was a consultant, I got to go to Nigeria twice in three months on a consulting project. It was extremely cool. It was eye-opening and it taught me a lot about why I love connecting with people so much. I just had a conversation earlier today with someone about the nonlinear path that my career has taken and how, as I look back, I can connect the dots and see why I do what I do now. So when I was in the corporate world, I had a little over or around 200 people who reported to me through various channels. And I got to a place where I was like burning out. I was overloaded most days of the week. Um, I, I also felt like I could never get caught up. And I was saying the same thing that my clients say to when they come to me, there's never enough time. I can't get everything done. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I've joined the wrong industry. Maybe I'm not cut out for this, but I actually liked the work I was doing, so I wanted to be good at it. So I got really clear about how to prioritize tasks, what to delegate and what to eliminate that didn't require my immediate attention. And rather than try to get as much done as possible, I focused on getting done what mattered the most and collaborating with my team to reprioritize the rest. This is going to be the foundation of the work that we're doing together today. This is where I had, I think, the most learning in my career. So let's flash forward hmm, about 20 years. And you know, now I'm teaching my clients what I've learned about the troubles with time management to this new, it's not really my concept. I learned it's an actually an engineering term, time leadership. So I love what I do because I get to see my clients free themselves from the shackles of the success trap. And the success trap is working all the time, feeling overwhelmed all the time, getting stuck and bogged down in working in instead of on the business, you know, leaving late, not having time to do all the things that self-care and all the things that we talk about and often don't get done. So I love to see my clients live into the dream that they share with me when they come to me. And I think the most rewarding part of my job is that over time, not only do my clients achieve their goals, but they often expand their visions and I get to be a part of that. So let's talk about time leadership. We're going to ditch time management, right? We're going to put everything that we've learned and all the apps on our phones for time tracking unless there's a real reason to, to time track your own time. Um, we're going to get rid of that stuff. So now that we've talked a little bit about what brought you here and you know more about me, let's really dive into this. You know, first I'd like to remind you that because I promise not to keep you here longer than about 45 minutes, we will only focus or primarily focus on the first pillar, which is time of time leadership, which is discovery. We'll learn a little bit about each pillar so you know what to expect and you can start to expand on what you learned today. But for the purposes of time, haha, tongue in cheek, time, wink, wink, our primary focus will be on discovery. So let's look at these three pillars. So pillar one, discovery. This is about getting crystal clear about your vision and goals. I call this the slowing down to speed up phase, but my clients, <laughs> I think jokingly, call it torture by clarity. Um, you know, joke, joke, but without clarity, we can't even begin to draw a map. So if you've ever gone on a road trip, have you tried to plan that trip without a destination? I mean, it's cute. It's a fun idea, but you run out of gas, snacks, can't find a rest stop. You need a restroom desperately. You have no idea where you are. Of course, this is my, you know, my college self before we had GPS and Waze and Google maps and, um, you know, I exit that tells us where all the restrooms are, but you get what I'm saying. If we start out on a journey without a destination, it's really, really difficult to get to where we want to be. So pillar one is discovery. We get crystal clear about what we want to achieve and what our end goals are. Pillar two is analysis. And this is where I take my clients through this process to observe and evaluate how they use their time, which tasks can be delegated, what can be eliminated or postponed, um, and then we estimate how much time they're going to recover. And another thing that I do is I have them, when they track their time, place a monetary value. So I'm going to invite you as you, as you contemplate this to evaluate your time and place a monetary value on your precious finite time. And I apologize and you're welcome in advance. You're going to likely get a shock, a bit of a jolt. Like what it really costs. So I like to ask the question, how much do you cost your business? 
And you might be shocked. You might be a little horrified. And sometimes that's what we need to spring into action, (laughs) but we don't want to take action before we cover our first two pillars. So pillar two is analysis. We're going to evaluate the time that we use, place a monetary value on it and start to estimate how much time we want to recover or how much time we believe we can recover. And we're going to do all of that before we get to pillar three which is action, which I really like to call it inspired action. Um, We talk a lot about motivation in the world of personal development, and I'm not a fan of motivation because I think it makes a lot of people think that there's something wrong with them if they, quote, can't get motivated. And motivation actually happens, by the way, once we've started about five minutes. So once we've started doing something, motivation kicks in about five minutes in. So if you've been wondering why you can't motivate to exercise or to do your administrative tasks or to tidy your desk or whatever it might be, just get started. Use the Nike phrase, right? Just do it. And then I add now. So just get started and then the motivation kicks in. So the idea behind inspired action is that we manufacture a desire to do certain things so that the motivation will kick in once we get started. So we're going to create an action plan with practical steps and workarounds to avoid potential setbacks. Now, this is where my clients usually want to start. They want to start at action. But remember that road trip without a destination, snacks, gas, toilets, running water, you'd be charging out of the gate and squandering more time than you already are. Ouch. I'm sorry. Sometimes the truth is painful. When I do this exercise, um, I spend you know, maybe five minutes or so chastising myself for how much time I've wasted looking at the beautiful images on Instagram. So there's a nice self-disclosure there. But so pillar three is about taking action. It's about creating action plans and workarounds to roadblocks that might come up. I would just like to remind you of my pro tip, which is never skip steps. Imagine a, like a tripod for a camera. It has three legs. Each leg is very important and they have to be balanced and and situated just so in order to be able to hold the camera up on its platform. That's what this is to me. Like none of these steps are anything without the others. They have to be there. They have to work together. Each one of them is just as, as thick and sturdy as the others. Never skip steps. Just, just, Trust me that going out of order will not be your friend. And when you take the time to talk about this and write down what you really want, everything starts to actually move faster. So this slowing down doesn't necessarily mean slowing down your business. Sometimes it just means pushing pause and evaluating, going up to the 10,000 foot view, getting dreamy, grab a magic wand or your genie bottle or whatever, and get kind of dreamy about what you want. And then we can bring it back down to earth and do something with it. So we don't want to take side trips and detours when we're on our business path. You know, maybe in real life, when we're on a vacation unplugged, that would be a great idea. And it's also, you know, quite a concept. So now that we know the three pillars and we know we're spending some time in discovery, this is where I would invite you to, if you haven't got something to write with yet, to grab something to write with and take some notes. I'm going to invite you to explore some of these questions and to consider what you really want. And this goes beyond just kind of like the basics, right? So this is where you're gonna take notes. I also want you to remember that you can use the chat and I'll, I'll come back and check it before we log out here so that I can answer any questions. So if there's something that pops up and you have a question, put it in the chat and we'll address it before we, before we close today. So pillar one, discovery. Like we have these three questions here, let's dig a little bit deeper. Why did you decide to do this? Why did you decide to start your own practice or your own business? What was it that got you going? And, you know, it's more than just like, oh, well, I, you know, I wanted to have freedom. I mean, that's great, but let's go a little bit deeper, right? What, what sets your heart on fire? What was the dreamiest thing that you thought might be impossible, but you were willing to give it a try anyway? Why did you decide to do this? For some of my clients, It's like, it's the thing that made me so angry being in the traditional role in the traditional field, working for someone else. And I wanted to bypass that and just be able to do things my way. So what made you excited? What lights you up about this? And then you start seeing like where you can make some changes based on looking at your primary 
roadblocks. So what I mean by pr primary roadblocks might be like, well, every time I try to do something new, someone, someone knocks on my door, right? I'm in my office. I'm trying to get some stuff done. I get interrupted constantly, nonstop or life life's on me and it flips upside down and I get derailed or, you know what, I'm going to really be honest here and tell you that mm, I get excited about something and then I just never start or I start and I never finish, right? Like we need to know what these roadblocks are so that we can prepare ourselves for them. Now, why do we start here? Why do we start with these questions? And I'll tell you again, if we start, if we charge out of the gate without like training, or, you know, mapping our path and getting intimately connected with this data that we're gathering, we will likely spin our wheels. So we always get back to basics. This is where my clients develop a little bit of kind of a, I don't know if it's love, hate. I think it's love frustrate relationship with me just temporarily because I'm pumping the brakes regularly, but let's go a little deeper. Why? Why are you doing this? This is where my coach asks me, what makes me so angry? I want to change it. I've had clients who've come to me with that. I've had clients who, who because I work with uh, so many medical providers who have said, yeah, when I was working in, you know, allopathic, um, for example, allopathic medicine, I was one of my clients was an ER doc for, mm, I think, close to 20 years. I just kept seeing people getting sicker and sicker over time. And I got really, I got really frustrated with that. Like I wanted to be able to address the root cause. So he dove headlong into learning about regenerative medicine and now has a successful regenerative medicine practice where they take a very holistic approach to rooting out the cause of disease and discomfort for their patients. So what is it that got you there? If you feel up to it, share in the chat, what made you decide to start your own thing? What made you starry eyed? Like, why is it important to you? The more attached we get to this, why, and I'm rubbing my fingertips together, like you can see it, there's an essence there. So the more attached you get to your big, huge, why that gigantic vision, the thing that, that you would do if money were no object, the more attached you are to that the easier and the faster everything else goes in part, because when we're super focused on the thing that we love and our why we shut down a lot of the rest of the noise, including distractions and other roadblocks that might come up, come up for us. So a little bit more, right? So we're going to dig deep, get into your, your you know, deep into your vision. Like what is your, if you could grab a magic wand and money, time, energy, resources were no object. What would that look like? Why? Again, why do you do this? What do you provide for your patients, your clients, or your customers that you could not provide in the system you were previously in? What is it that sets you apart? Why do they come to you? What are you providing? What do you offer? What exactly do you do for your patients or your clients or your, or your customers? Why do they choose to be with you? What is it that you do that's different or that's maybe more of, or, or something along those lines, right? What is it that you provide? So I would invite you to write your answers where you can reflect on them again later. This is the juicy bit. And my clients know, because I warned them early, that we practice this slow down to speed up method of business scaling. Like I said earlier, we don't want to scale our problems. We want to address this head on. And if there's, I beat the same drum for a lot, for like three or four messages. But one of my biggest messages with my clients is a reminder. And sometimes they have to walk this backwards and, and re, redo it. But we really want to build our business around the life that we want, not the other way around. We've not been taught that in our upbringing, in our school systems, even in our, in our, you know, higher education systems, we're not taught that we're taught that we do the thing and then, then we can have the life. But I would say that if you want, if time with your family, for example, is very precious to you, then you build this business around that very strong perimeter, that very strong boundary of what quality time or, and quantity time with your family means to you. So when we get to the heart and soul of the why, our big vision. So I invite you also not just to talk about why you do what you do in your work when you answer these questions, but also what's in it for you. Why do you want this? 
What is it that you want in the rest of your life? Think about your relationships, your home life, your free time, your hobbies, things you do for pleasure. How often do we work pleasure into our day? And I'll go ahead and answer that. Rarely. <laughs> Most of us rarely, right? So what are the things that you really want to be achieving in your life and go for everything? When people say you can't have it all, that's a very limited mindset. You know, we can have it all. We just need to figure out how to make it fit. And we can start by building the business around the life we want. So when we get to the heart and soul of it, now we can get super clear about what's most important and why we need to structure our time in such a way that supports actually achieving our goals and dreams. I'm going to repeat that. When we get to the heart and soul, the big why of our big dream, now we can get super clear about what's most important and why we need to structure our time in such a way that supports actually achieving our goals and dreams. I had a prospective client once get really, really quiet in an initial phone call with me. And when I asked if they were okay, they responded, holy expletive, except they didn't say that word. All of this is actually possible. I had never realized or believed that it could be possible, but now I see how it can be. And, and what resonated with me when they were having this aha moment was that I could already kind of see what was possible. They had never heard themselves say it out loud and had never had it validated and reflected back to them. So no matter what my client's goals are, we always start with discovery. Always, 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 always. So the third piece of this here is to write everything down, get super detailed, write it in the present tense, by the way, if you started writing it in the future, just switch your tenses and put it in present tense, write it as if it's already come true. Now, before we move on, I see that there's some chat here, so I'm going to try to look at it. So, okay. So we've got some feedback on some of the questions, right? I love what I do, which is helping people. And I got tired of using my time and energy for other people and wanted to devote all of my time to helping my own clients and living a life where my time was my own. I mean, that's just so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Like, I, I feel like when we give a voice to our why, it sparks something in us and really connects to our heart. And because so many of my clients are, you know, science-based practitioners and providers, sometimes, even though they're very compassionate and kind and wonderful, big-hearted people, sometimes they forget about these details. So when we talk about it and we get clear and we share, like, this is why I do this, they'll, you know, I... I love people. I got, you know, or like one of my clients was like, well, when I was a, a young, early teenager, like starting around age 13, I took care of my mother who was very, very sick with type two diabetes. So I wanted to become a doctor so I could help people heal their bodies. And, you know, I don't think it gets any more personal than that. You know? So I love that. And so the second question where, or the second answer was a supportive, calm space where I can help guide them to hear their own voice amongst the noise. And I reveal things about themselves that they're unable to see. There's nothing more fulfilling than helping someone change their life. Amen. This is the thing, you know, my, most people, I would say all entrepreneurs, anybody who starts their own business has a real reason behind it could be for helping people. It could be based on some other, you know, aspect. It could be that they grew up a certain way and they want to completely change that. Whatever the reason is, we all show up because of something. And I love how intentional, Dahlia, thank you for sharing this, how intentional you are about supporting your clients and achieving their highest goals and aspirations. It's beautiful. Now, see if I can change, if I can close the chat. <laughs> there it goes. Sometimes I get a little stuck on my tech. All right. So before we move into what would be the next pillar, which is uh, analysis, we need to get clear about the things that derail us. So I mentioned this earlier, but let's dig into it a little bit more. We all have them, these roadblocks. We all have them. They might be mental blocks. It might be real life stuff that gets in the way of us getting stuff down. So what I invite you to do right now is to write down the things that consistently get in the way of you getting things done, either in your big goals or your daily stuff or both. Just write everything down. One of the pieces of advice that I give my clients is, one, get out of your head. Two, 
get out of your head. Three, get out of your head. Four, get out of your head again. And then five, just do it one more time and get out of your head. So we spend a lot of time in the beginning writing everything down or speaking it out if that's a better mode for them. So write it all down. But don't worry, you know, if you maybe you sound petty or you feel it sounds like you're complaining or you're frustrated or whatever, don't worry about that because the point of this is really to get out of our heads, to get clear, to be really, really honest with ourselves so that we can get to work because that's what we all want. We all want to charge out of the gate. If you own your own business, you likely are not blessed with the patience of Job. (laughs) At least most of the people I know, myself included, who have their own businesses and started their own thing, not our first quality. It's probably the thing that keeps us going, but it can also be, you know, a hindrance. So let's go through some of the questions together, right? Um, What do we have here? What are the things that derail your day? What gets in the way of accomplishing the important stuff that seems never to be finished? Uh, One of my clients had a staff member who consistently interrupted them like many, many times a day. And she was lacking the confidence to like grab the bull by the horns and get things done without like feedback or validation for every single thing. There were a number of issues going on and this one was huge. This was a real problem. Ultimately, we realized that this person wasn't the right fit for the grand vision of my client's practice. So we worked out a plan and we replaced her with a better fit. Sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes we make a bad hire or sometimes we make a hire that's good for what we thought we wanted. Then we get super clear and we realize that the fit isn't there. That's okay. That happens. It just, you know, sometimes it happens. And if you're playing the long game, your clarity will help you sort out the type of team that you want to bring on board how to train them or better yet, bring someone in to train them. That's always what I recommend. So you can get back to serving your patients or clients or your customers. Another client had difficulty focusing on what was most important because everything seemed like a fire that needed to be put out. I'd raise your hand if you can relate to that. I got, I've got one hand in the air. I used to put both, but now just one. Now this is super common with my clients, by the way. I'd say about 95% of them struggle with this before we start doing this work. And you might be surprised to know that we still go through this process of getting clear, identifying all roadblocks and figuring out the workarounds for these roadblocks. So the next part of this is, you know, once you've written down the things that consistently get in your way, that regularly derail you, or maybe even anticipatory roadblocks like fear. Oh, well, if I start making really great money, somebody's going to come out of the woodwork and ask, you know, with their hand out and ask for something. I've, I've heard that come up a few times too. So try to think of everything that regularly happens and maybe even things that you're worried might happen. I don't know if you've heard this saying, but Worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it takes you nowhere. (laughs) So I like to say, if you're going to sit in the rocking chair, do it so that you can stare out at nature or people watch or whatever it is that you're, where your view goes. So we've identified our roadblocks. Now we need to talk about, and the key word here is willingness. What are we willing to do to work around these roadblocks? And this is kind of like taking a self-defense course. You know, I'm not I'm not suggesting you prepare yourself to go into a bad neighborhood, but if you are prepared for things that could potentially come up, you may notice when they do, but seem impervious because you're prepared. So what is one step that you could take to work around your most common roadblock? Feel free to share that in the, in the chat as well, because I think it's kind of interesting um, you know, what comes up for us, but you know, the workaround, just in case you are a fire putter outer person, the workaround for thinking everything's on fire and needs to be, you know, extinguished immediately is really simple, but it's not necessarily easy. It's about getting clear about what the priorities are and then sticking to that plan. And the key here is now communicating that with your team, make it clear, get it written into your operations manuals, which I call the office Bibles. And prioritize like your life and business depend on it because they do. This isn't finger wagging, you know, prioritizing, you know, get your priorities straight, young, young person. This is so much more about staying super focused on what's most important. The the things that make money, the things that serve your patients or clients at the highest level, and the things that help you achieve your objectives. Now, 
This step is also imperative to your process and to your success. And I, I cannot emphasize it enough. Discovery, identifying roadblocks and workarounds. It's, as I mentioned, it's like taking self-defense class. It will prepare you and you will be less likely to be derailed when things come up because they often do. You know, you've probably seen those memes that float around that say, you know, most people think that success is this nice straight line from start to success, but really it's this winding up, down, backwards, flippy do, you know, all over the place looks like a, you know, a kitten that got hold of string and then they get to success. So just remember that like we can, we can have an expectation and then we can be disappointed or we can prepare ourselves for things that might come up and we're prepared and, you know, maybe less thrown off by it. So once you've done this, once you have, you know, figured out, gotten really clear about, about what you really want. And I, I want to share something with you that I forgot to mention earlier. I have, I call it the awe question. So I recommend that you spend a good amount of time after this writing down what it is that you really want and talking about your roadblocks and talking about your willingness to work around them and ask yourself the awe question, which stands for, and what else? And ask yourself that question until you run out of answers, because you might find some like golden or maybe even platinum nuggets when you go outside of your regular thinking. So stretch yourself beyond, you know, 20 or 30 minutes to spend some time writing and ask that question. Ah, and what else? So from here, then you're ready to tackle the next two pillars, which are analysis and inspired action. And remember your pro tip, don't skip steps. Now let's review what we've learned together today. I've briefed you on the three pillars of time leadership. You know why it's so important not to skip steps and why you, why we start with discovery and why we spent more time on that today than anything else. We're not going to get anywhere if we don't know where we're going. So, well, we might get somewhere, but we not, might not like where we land, right? So when we get crystal clear on why you do what you do, what you stand for, and what sets you apart from other providers, now you're prepared to move into analyzing your time. Also, it'll make you feel a little bit um, more hopeful before you start looking at maybe how you're actually spending your time. Um, remember, this is the slow down to speed up method, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually slowing your business down unless that's what you want to do. Sometimes we need to do that. We need to pump the brakes and evaluate a little bit, and that's okay. Just remember my client who barely had started the work and still increased his revenues in about three or four months. And incidentally, not really incidentally, this is a big deal. By the end of our first year of working together, he had doubled his business and going into the second year, he was doubling again. And where he's graduated, but we stay in touch. And he now does have, he had to build a building because he ran out of space. He now does have an interdisciplinary um, or multidisciplinary rather uh, integrative wellness center with everything from chiropractic and PT to nutrition, regenerative medicine, and, uh, and a few other things and lots of different providers there. So they're going gangbusters and he has fulfilled his dream, which is so, full, you know, very exciting for me to see, but just wonderful for him and for his, for his team and for his family. So I may have mentioned just as we review what we've learned together, right? We're going to look at the importance of your why, understanding what sets you apart, looking at your roadblocks and how you can remove them or work around them. And the most important thing, which I may have mentioned a few times, which is do not skip steps. So I want to share with you that I've created a program that can support you through all three pillars from start to finish. And it can help you pave the way to taking back up to a full day. My clients average about an hour a day that they take back. So that can work out to be about a full day per week. And I'd like to share that with you. Um, but before I do, I'm just gonna check the chat to see if I missed anything. So I see a couple things here. Mm, this one's good. And so this, one of the things that came up was facing my own limiting beliefs around slowing down. Oh yes, here I'm clapping, clapping, clapping. Yes, right? I mean, have we not been um, conditioned to believe that if we slow down, we're gonna miss something. If we, you know, we're not hustling and grinding, then, you know, we might be having some issues or we might not be able to uh, achieve our goals. But the truth is, is that the slowing down helps us with so much clarity. And 
can help us see what we might be missing oops, and help us move forward. I'm just trying to close the chat here. All right. I'm trying to close the chat. So I'd like to invite you now to to spend some time with me. So you've seen, as you've seen in our time together, I place a lot of emphasis on leading and guiding your time rather than managing it, air quotes on management. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there will be a point in the growth of your practice or your business that the practice or business itself will demand that you rise to a level, a different level of leadership. Your practice is going to demand that you elevate and start thinking and making decisions like the high impact CEO that you're meant to be. Even if that's not the title you give yourself, if you're the owner, you're the president, you're the chief, whatever, you must uplevel your thinking and how you view your time. And as a provider, you may not have had that in mind when you decided to go into private practice. And I totally get it. And you know, you're welcome in advance. You cannot escape this, actually. So the good news is, <laughs> the good news is, is that as the CEO of your practice, you're not required to do all the work. The bad news, and it's really actually still good news, is that you are required to have a crystal clear vision and be prepared to make decisions based on how they relate to and align with your vision. This is challenging if we're stuck in working in the business all the time. So my invitation to you is to book a strategy session with me. Together, we can map out a clear time leadership plan where you can take into account what you really want, where you're headed, and what you're willing to do to achieve your goals. The success of your practice depends on your clarity. I'm going to say this again because this is a drum that I beat with my clients as well. The success of your practice depends on your clarity. So... When you schedule this time with me, we get to spend 45 minutes together on me. This is a complimentary session to craft your plan. And I can comfortably say, I'll just go ahead and predict one of two things will happen. Remember, I've been doing this for a little over 12 years. So this is, this is what I've seen. The first thing that might happen is that you'll love your plan and you'll want to implement it on your own. And the only thing that I ask is that you just keep me posted on how it's going. Cause I love to, I love to hear and celebrate you as you succeed. The second possibility is that you'll love your plan and you'll decide that you want more support implementing it, in which case we can explore working together either one-on-one -on -one or with a small cohort of your peers over five weeks in the time leadership program that's specifically designed to support private practice owners in achieving the dreams and vision. It's really that simple. So you can use the QR code. You just take your camera out and focus it in on the thing that says scan me, and it'll give you something to tap on. It'll open up to the page where you can um, request some time with me, or you can wait for the email or the message that's coming to you after this that'll have a link in it. I just want to thank you again for being here. For those of you who got up early or who stayed up late or maybe squeezed this into your busy day, I really appreciate you. I value your time and I am grateful to have spent this time together. Thank you so much. Make sure to check your email or your messages for your free time leadership checklist, which is going to be coming to you and to schedule your strategy call. Thank you so much.